In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study today. We thank you for the deep revelations you have for us in your word. We thank you because of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you for what he means for every one of our lives. We bless your name that we we'll now realize all we need we can find in Jesus. Jesus. We know he satisfies and we know joy he supplies. Without him, everything in life would have been worthless for us. But we thank you because you have revealed Jesus Christ unto us. And he's the dearest friend we ever are. We are praying, O oh Lord, that as we look at your word once again today, you'll help us to come into the benefit of what he brought into the world and to our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that you will teach us to put and lay all our bodies at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after he has born all all the body, then we can go free and enjoy the things you have be giving us in the new covenant. We bless your people today, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are still in the study of the epistle to the Hebrews. And as you must have realized by now, the epistle to the Hebrews is full of revelation from the Lord. Immediately you begin to study the epistle to the Hebrews who are arrested by the thought and the fact that Jesus Christ had come to make a better covenant with his people. The epistle comes to Hebrews chapter 8. There is a mention of the old covenant. And there is a mention of the new covenant. And then the old covenant is part and pushed aside so that the new covenant can come to its real place. And then we are told that this new covenant is the better covenant. Look at Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13. In that he says a new covenant he has made the first old. Now, that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. He talks about the old, he talks about the new. The new one, he calls the better covenant. In verse 6. But now, as he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. So, when you see, see, ye, or to ba, you share, I share to you on your life, you. Ni wa bi o ti je pe alari na ma je mu titun ti o dara ju ni se eti a fi se ofin lori ileri ti o seju be lo and so you have here the introduction and the emphasis of the better covenant mo o da mi loju pe o ri ni bi ti akayi pe a ti se aro aso akoso nipa ti ma je mu titun to dara ju and it tells us that the better covenant is associated and established upon 
better promises. You pick up that word better. And you look at the epistle to the Hebrews. And you check off from the very first chapter as you go on to the very end. And you will see that the word better comes up many, many times. And it is connected with the establishment of the covenant that is new, a covenant that is better. And the use of the word better, as we look at all the chapters, is telling us that there is no point in which the new covenant is inferior to the old covenant. And as we look at this, we would also realize that many believers have not studied the word of God enough to come into the benefits of this better covenant. As students of the Bible and Bible Christians, you ought to know uh, the emphasis that the epistle to the Hebrews puts on the word better. Look at it and see it for yourself. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels. It's telling us that this Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, and the great high priest is better than all the angels. You know you cannot talk of a covenant without talking of the sacrifice that established that covenant. And we are told that the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ establishing this new covenant is even a better sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 23 It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these but the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. And as he made the sacrifice, then he established the covenant or the testament. The testament is the covenant. The covenant is the testament. And it is a will. When we are talking of the testament, we are talking of the will. When we're talking of the covenant, we're talking of the contract. And the Lord Himself has written a testament, has written a will, a covenant, a contract, and that contract or will is better than the old. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22. Look at the word better again. By so much was Jesus made a shorty of a better. Testament. And in fact, when he tells us about the shorty, he's talking about the mediator. That he is the one standing between man and God. He's the one that is appeasing God on behalf of man. He's the one that is pleading, don't touch them, don't punish them, don't suppress them, don't bring the judgment of their sin upon them, set them free. That's the surety of the covenant, and that's the mediator of the covenant. You have read in the Old Testament when a plague broke out, then Moses told Aaron, he said, get you up quick and uh, take fire in your censer and appear before the Lord because the plague has started and we're told Aaron took the censer
Nebuchadnezzar, he went before the Lord, and immediately that uh, mediator came before the Lord, the plague was stayed. Now Jesus Christ is stopping all the evil things that may come upon us as a result of our sin, and is a better mediator of a better covenant with better promises. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 But now as he obtained a more excellent ministry Better ministry By how much also is the mediator of a better covenant Which was established upon better promises Everything for the new covenant is better and he did all this by the sprinkling of his blood and it's a better blood than any other blood Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling which speaketh better things than that of Abel. The blood of Abel was demanding for vengeance, was demanding that Cain should be punished. But the blood of Jesus Christ, better than that of Abel, demanded that they should be forgiven. And it is the sprinkling of that blood now that leads us to a better hope than any hope anybody could have in the old covenant. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11 verse 19 for the Lord made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. There's a better hope now. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24. And the better hope is based on the fact that now we have better promises, which we have read already in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6, established upon better promises. And now as your sins are forgiven, you are now a child of God, you have come to the kingdom of God, whenever you pray and you look at the word of God, you are expecting to receive better things from the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 40. God having provided some better things for us. And this better thing is not only on earth here, also when we get to heaven, there is a better substance awaiting us in heaven. Chapter 10, and reading from verse 34. For ye had compassion on, on me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. In fact, now we're even expecting a better resurrection than any resurrection any of the Old Testament people are. Because you know, as we have uh, believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, because He lives, we shall live also. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 35. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. That is, they will obtain the better resurrection with the people
people who are living in the age in the period in the era of the new covenant at present now we are pilgrims here on earth we're moving on to our destination we're leaving this place eventually to get to another place what's the name the epistle to the Hebrews calls that place Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16 but now they desire a better country that is an heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God for he has prepared for them a city you can see then as we go through the epistle to the Hebrews that you have something better in the new covenant a better name for the Lord Jesus Christ better sacrifice that he offered to the Lord a better covenant he has now raised up he is now giving us a better testament and now we know that his blood even promises better things than that of Abel we are no more hopeless people will come into a better home. The promises that we now claim are not just ordinary promises. They are better promises than the promises of the old covenant. Through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father has provided a better thing for every one of us. Not only on that one, we get to heaven, there is a better and enduring substance as well. The dead in Christ are waiting for a better resurrection. And all believers will get into that better country. Actually, the Lord had given this indication in the Old Testament. He had assured the children of Israel he was bringing something better than what they were enjoying. And the conclusion of everything you find in Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 11. Ezekiel 36 verse 11. Ezekiel 36 verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estate, and I will do better unto you. I will do better unto you than at your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. The children of Israel, they looked at their condition. And they wondered why they were in that condition. They looked at the privileges of the old covenant. And they saw the limitation of the old covenant. And the limitation of their privileges in the old covenant. And while they were wondering is this all that is available the Lord said be patient a new one is coming a new covenant is coming and at that time I will do unto you better than at your beginning and we are the people that have not come to, that have now come to receive of that better thing from the Lord what a great privilege for you that you are living at such a time like this that the possibility of better things and better promises await you even in the new covenant and the better covenant 
awon lile ise awon nkan to dara ju eti o bojumuju o nrodio ni akoko o ma je mu titoye that's what we want to look at in detail today in our passage of study hebrews chapter 8 from verse 6 to verse 12 eleyi la fe gbe yewo ni sise ntele ninu eko wa tun ninu iwe eberu ori kejo lati ese ikefa si ikeje la last week we looked at verses 1 to 13 e lo se to ko ja wo lati ese ikini si iketa la as we study today you will now realize when we go into the study why we still need to look into the verses we're looking at today yes think ka ko loni wo na yo wa mo eredi ele ta tu fi ka ko ninu eti an ko loni who are the participants and the privileges of the new covenant awon ta ni alaba pe ta bi ru awon wo lo leto ninu mo je mu tito yi if you do not study very well you will not understand that you have a part in it ti o ba ka ko doju doju o ni mo pe o leto ninu ninu re what are the promises in the new covenant ki ni awon ileri tin be ninu mo je mu tito if you do not look go through the bible very well you will not know the promises that are lying follow there that you have not laid claim to that should be yours but you have not enjoyed ti o ba wo nu bibeli fini fini dada o ni mo iru awon ileri to ko wa nbe gunduku to je pe o ti mo lo lati gba ti olodun ti fo lanfa ni what time can we enjoy them iru akoko wo gan wa la la ile gbadure what space do we need in our lives to be able to enjoy them iru iri wo la ni lo ninu aye wa ka to le gbadura awon ni so so the three points we are considering today iyo mo wa lo sinu nkoko meta ti an gbe yawo lo ni particulars of the new covenant awon alaba pe ma je mu titun na the promises of the new covenant awon ileri to wa nu ma je mu titun the privilege of the new creature ati anfani ti e da titun let's look at number 1 e je ki awo koko akoko the particulars of the new covenant awon alaba pe ma je mu titun na hebrews chapter 8 verse 8 e beru ori kejo ese ikejo for finding fault with them he says behold the days come says the lord when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah nitori ti o ri abuku lara won o wi pe ki esi ojo nbo ni oluwa wi ti emi o ba ile israel ati ile judah da ma je mu titun in verse 10 ni ese ike wa for this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord i will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts and i will be unto them a god and they shall be to me a people nitori eyi ni ma je mu ti emi o ba ile israel da leyin ojo won ni ni oluwa wi emi o fi ofin mi si nu won emi o si ko won si okan won emi o si ma je olorun fun won won o si ma je eniyan fun mi who then are the partakers in the new covenant awon ta wa ni alaba pin ma je mu titun yi if you look at verse 8 it says i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah ti o ba wo ese ikejo o ni emi yo ba awon ara ile israel da ma je mu titun ati ile judah If you look at verse 10, to ba wo ese ike wa. It says for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord. Oni ni tori eyi ni ma je mu ti emi o ba ile Israel da leyin ojo won ni ni Oluwa wi. The casual reader of the Bible then will say well that's for Israel, I'm a Nigerian, I'm a Ghanaian, I'm a Kenyan, I'm a South African, I am a black man, I am a Gentile. What part do I have in the new covenant? I'm not an Israel. It's I'm not an Israelite. He said I will make this covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Ti o ba ka je oluka bibeli ti o ki finu fi do wo daada wa so pe ibi ti akaye o n toka si awon omo Israel tori pe omo Nigeria le mi omo Ghana ni mi Kenya ni mo ti wa ile alawo du omo ti wa tori na mi o ni pa ati ipe ninu omo je mu yi awon omo Israel Olorun ba soro. That's why you need to study the Bible the word of God. Ki di gan to fin lati keko ninu oro Olorun do ni dudu. I'm going to make this new covenant and then he brought out the house of Israel do we then have any right as gentiles to claim the privileges and the promises of the new covenant you need to understand the thinking and also the thought of the word of god as it mentions israel at this time Look at Galatians chapter 6 and verse 16. It says as many as walk according to this rule peace be unto them and mercy upon the Israel of God. Oni iye awon ti o si rin gege bi won yi 
alaafia lori won ati anu ati lori israel olorun can you see here it's telling us there is israel of the natural flesh there is the israel of god of the spiritual stock on so fun wa ni yi pe awon mo bibi israel wa nipa ti ara be si ni awon israel nipa ti emi wa te je israel olorun the galatians wa gentiles awon ara galatia je kefere and he was telling them you are no more under the old covenant under all the judaism that that all the Pharisees and the Sadducees were perpetrating. You are no more under the law. You have been set free by Christ. He told the Galatians, forget about circumcision. Forget about Judaism. And now he spoke to those same Galatians. He said, we are the Israel of God. Nibai o tu wa nba awon ara Galati ayi kan na soro wi pe nibai yo e ti di Israel Olorun e ti di atun bi you are walking by the spirit e rin nipa ti e you are not fulfilling the works of the flesh e o mu ife ku fi ara se and the fruit of the spirit is manifest in your life e so e mi si nfa ra hanu aye yin well then as many as walk according to this rule peace be unto them and mercy and upon the Israel of God nipa bayi o wa ni iye awon ti o si rin gege bi won yi alaafia lori won ati anu ati lori israel olorun in romans chapter 2 ninu romu ori keje the apostle makes it very clear apostle is only on to ye ni that the israelites were circumcised in the flesh god did not reckon with them he was reckoning with the people that are circumcised in their spirit in their heart o so gban gba wi pe awon israel ta ko ni la nipa ti odi ara olorun o ni nkan kan se pelu won sugbon o ni nkan se pelu awon israel ti a ko ni la nipa ti emi romans chapter 2 verse 20 for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is of the heart in the spirit not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God ki se eyi ti o fara han ni ju be ni ki se eyi ti o fara ni ara ni ikola sugba ju ti inu ni ju ati ikola ti okan ninu emi ni ki se ti odi ara iyen eni ti ko si lodo eniyan bi ko si lodo olorun he say when you look at the face of the man you say that's an israelite when you look at the face of the other man you say that's a gentile but he says god is not looking at the physical now he's looking at the heart if the heart is circumcised you are part of the israel of god o so pe ki se en ta kan wo loju bayi ta ni a omo ile israel ile le ju ni ta kan to wo elomi loju ta ni a keferi pon bele lele yi ki se eyan ni ti olorun wo olorun wo tinu okan tori pe en ti a ba ti gbala ti okan re ti yi pada iru eni be o n olorun to ka si gege bi ju and so you see if your heart has been cleansed your heart has been circumcised god looks at you you have the mark of the covenant with you you are part of the israel of god and the new covenant the better covenant is yours Romans chapter 9 verse 6 Romans chapter 9 verse 6 Not as though the word of God has taken none effect for they are not all Israel which are of Israel I said if you look at them they are living in Jerusalem they are living in Bethlehem they are living in Capernaum they are living in those places oh he said that's not what we are talking about not they they are not all Israel who are of Israel he says neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children but in Isaac that shall that shall be called only be ni ki se pe ni tori won je iru omo Abraham gbogbo won ni omo sugbon ninu Isaac ni a si pe iru omo re that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of God but the children of promise are counted for the sea eyi ni ni pe ki se awon omo ni pa ti ara ni omo Olorun sugbon awon omo ileri ni aka ni iru omo 
and so you will see here that what he's talking about is a spiritual thing. It's not just because, well, I'm an Israelite naturally. Therefore, the new covenant belongs to me. No, when you have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you are part of Israel spiritually, and the new covenant belongs to you. Let me, Let me illustrate it to you in two different uh, passages. And look at this very carefully now, Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord was talking to Joshua in particular. And you will see what the Lord was telling Joshua. And then you will see the promise he was giving unto him directly. Look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Listen to this. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Who was that promise given to? Joshua. Joshua ni. Am I Joshua? Se Joshua ni mi. Not physically, not directly. Has God given you that promise? Look at Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Five. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have, for he has said. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Exactly what he told Joshua, he removed it from Joshua now, and he laid it before you. He said, don't worry again, let your conversion be without covetousness. I see not told you, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. <laughs> Yes, that's how you understand that although it was it mentioned Israel and Judah in the new covenant, as you look at the scripture, then you know that if you are a believer, that new covenant belongs to you. That's Bible does repeatedly. Look at Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26 and in verse 12. He says, I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. Who was that promise given to? It was given to Israel. It was at the time of Moses talking to the people and it is recorded here in Leviticus. It says, I will walk among you. I will be your God and you shall be my people. Do we have the promise that he will be with us too? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And look at it in verse 18. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. It's taken from Leviticus, which was given to Israel, now it's given to the Corinthians, given to the Gentiles, given to the church. If you connect it back to Leviticus, so you might say, well, that's for the Israelites. They just quoted it. It's not for me. That's why chapter 7 verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 verse 
And so as you look at the epistle to the Hebrews and it says the new covenant I'll make it with Israel, I'll make it with Judah. As you compare the scriptures, you know it is not only for Israel in the physical. If you are a child of God, you have come to the kingdom of God, you are part of the Israel of God and the new covenant is for you. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 As you look at Acts chapter 2 The Holy Ghost was poured out upon the people And you will remember that all those people were Israelites And on that day of Pentecost There were many Israelites who came from various countries into Jerusalem as Peter was going to explain the outpouring of the Holy Ghost to them he quoted from the prophecy of Joel and of course when Joel prophesied in the Old Testament he was prophesying to the children of Israel so he quoted what Joel had said to Israel but now look at the conclusion in verse 39 for the promise is unto you are you there those who are Israelites standing before them and to your children the descendants of the Israelites and now to all that are far off the Gentiles even, even as many as the Lord our God shall call that is whosoever the Lord calls into the kingdom and in response to that call he becomes part of the people that will partake of the promises of the Lord that means then we are the partakers of the new covenant if that is so what are the promises we have in the new covenant that leads us to point number two here now is where the believer ought to notice very minutely and very carefully and every time you read of an Old Testament person taking a benefit from the Old Testament you should tell yourself I have a benefit that is far above that that is greater than that that is better than that that is better than that Look at Abraham praying. See how God answered his prayer. You are standing on new covenant ground. And you tell yourself, My prayer should be higher than that of Abraham, and the answer God will give me will be greater and they will be more speedy than the one God gave Abraham because I am on a better covenant level. Look at Elijah. A man of like passions as we are. But you lived under a lower covenant. Say you had authority with heaven. Anytime you are praying, think in yourself, if Elijah were praying as I'm praying now, God would have answered, I stand a better chance than Elijah because I am in the new covenant. Sister, remember Anna. You remember that Anna prayed? You understand how God answered her prayer? She was in the old covenant. You now, you are under the new covenant. And when you tell God something, oh, you will say, this is very 
similar to the prayer Anna prayed. And God answered Anna speedily. Therefore, since I'm under this better covenant, I'm standing a better chance of having my answer because I have greater promise than that of Anna. Ezekiah was somebody that received a negative prophecy. He was, a, he was an old covenant man. Isaiah told him, Set your house in order, you are going to die. Old covenant man. In the kindergarten, in the primary school. Old covenant man. Speaking the old language of the old covenant without the new language of the, of the Spirit of God. Old covenant man with incomplete Bible in his hand. Old covenant man that did not know the first name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Old covenant man that had been redeemed only by the blood of animal. A, a negative prophecy came to his life. He said, as I go your way, then he told God, he said, Oh Lord, even though we're in the old covenant here, you tell me to die. How am I going to die? I'm not ready yet. What are you going to do? He didn't take one hour. God said, All right, Ezekiah, old covenant man, I give you 15 years. Is that enough for you? He said, Thank you, Lord. That's enough. <laughs> New covenant man, you have a dream, it's not even a reality, and then you have a negative uh, prophecy in that dream, and you are trembling, and you cannot stand on your better covenant ground and say, See what Ezekiah did, I am on a better ground, I'm going to do more than he did. We should from today stand on the better promises of the new covenant and it will be yours in Jesus name. The prophet that came to Ezekiah was a saved, sanctified prophet. You remember chapter 6? Of that was the place where the Lord sanctified Isaiah. If you read the account of Esca, you'll find that in chapter 38, it was much later after Esca had been sanctified that he came with that prophecy unto Ezekiah. Ezekiah, old covenant man, he rejected the negative prophecy of his sanctified prophecy prophet and said I will not die go your way and the Lord gave him life and gave him 15 years and an unsanctified man unsanctified woman with their lipstick with their pami with their jewelry they come to you and say I know you deeper like people you don't believe prophecy but they told us in our church the people that told them in their church they are not sanctified she herself bringing the prophecy to you is not sanctified and she herself you can see from the outlook that this one the fire from the altar of the Lord has not touched her and said uh, they told me to come and tell you from our church that you will die. You new covenant man, new covenant woman, you are trembling because unsanctified woman came to tell you prophecy. Why don't you tell her go your way? I'm in the new covenant. That's what you are talking of. Oh, there is nothing like that. There is life abundance in the new covenant. <laughs> 
obirin kan wa wa e to je pe a o ti e ti igbala de bi pa so di mimo to je pe o nkan na lo kun ete o lo pe kan na to 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 ko gbogbo awon nkan aye sara yi o wa so fun e pe eyin ara di pa ku ti mo pe ki n gbagbo ninu aso tele ninu ijo wa won so pe ki so fun e pe nkan bayi o sele si iwo to si wa ninu akoko mo je mu tutun o wa le mu duro re wa gbe jinijini ni wa gbe ti o ti e ti ni ife ifara han ina olorun nu aye re lati le so fun re ni be pe iwo e o ti o ti ni ri pe lolorun ma ba ti e lo akoko mo je mu tutun mo wa n o ni ku o wa be si ni wariri ni waju ru eni be ko ye ko ri be new covenant people don't fear negative prophecy we stand on new covenant ground we cancel it and throw it away iwo to wa la koko ma je mu titun ma se beru nipa so tele ti o da a wa la koko ma je mu titun ise ni ko fa gileru nkan be new covenant people don't fear any dream you have any dream you wake up you raise up your hands and say praise the lord i'm alive i'm going to show the works of the lord all that negative thing the devil you are wasting your time i mean new covenant brother new covenant sister i have life and life in abundance and you go your way the joy of the lord will be your strength omo olorun ti o wa ni akoko ma je mu titun oya ko berun go ba lala ngo ba ti e lala kan ti o da se lo ya ko jiloju ala ko nawo re soke pe oluwa mo dupe lowo re tori mo tu wa laaye loni akoko ma je mu titun mo wa eto mi ni lati wa laaye ati lati ma royin ogun olorun nipa bayi ko tesi waju nu aye olorun tori pe aye olorun ni pa ti agbara re you will enjoy the better covenant wa gbadu akoko ma je mu titun you see in hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6 it tells us that the promises of the new covenant better covenant they are better promises ori ninu eberu ori ke jo ese ikefa oni awon ileri tin be ninu majemu titun o ji awon ileri to daraju and they will be yours yo si je ti re look at it now in hebrews chapter 11 verse 13 iwo wo bayi ninu eberu ori kokan la ese iketa la these all died in faith not having received the promises but seeing them having seen them afar off were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth gbogbo awon won yi ni o ku ni igbagbo lai ri ileri won ni gba sugbon ti won ri won ni o kere rere ti won si gba won mu ti won si jewo pe alejo ati atipo ni awon lori ile aye he was uh, talking he was uh, talking on the old covenant people o so nipa awon eniya ti gbe ni akoko mo je mu lai lai they didn't fail won ni won ku ninu igbagbo not have been received the promises se ni won ko gba awon ileri won ni what does that mean ki le le tu ma se it's like sometimes during the day you look up like this you, you see an aeroplane coming o ka dabi pe ka fi we pe losan o ri ngba to ri o wa ri pe balu kan bo and uh, the cargo all the things that the aeroplane is uh, bringing as it's uh, flying and coming is bringing everything gbogbo awon eru eti balu yin ko bo gbogbo re lo wa nu e to si ngbe bo but before that aeroplane landed to discharge and to bring out all the loads you have gone out of town eh sugba ko to di pe balu yi wa ba sile ko wa ka ko to ko gbogbo awon eru to wa nu e iwo ti o ti rin ajo you covenant people they saw jesus coming awon eniyan ma jamu lai lai won wo jesus lo pe the aeroplane coming won wo balu to nbo they saw the promises coming Mwari awo ileri to nbo they saw the opening of the holy ghost coming mo nwo ifiku ni eni mo ti o nbo Moses saw it coming Moses ri o nbo that all the people of God will be filled with the spirit of God pe gbogbo awon eni olorun lai da eni ke ni si la fun pelu agbara e so saw the aeroplane coming Isaiah won wo abalu ito po lo ke and water upon him that is thirsty ni pe won da omi lu awon ti o gbe nbe and I will pour my spirit upon all your children won si da emi mi lu awon mo yin and Jeremiah saw the aeroplane coming Jeremiah won wo balu na to nbo make a new covenant with us of Israel in that day won ba awon ile Israel da ma je mu tutu ko ba won so that aeroplane coming ju e li ri ba lu na to nbo to what I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh ni ke yo ju emi o tu emi mi si are yo your sons upon all your daughters sori awon mo yin okunrin ati awon mo yin obirin upon your hand maidens will I pour my spirit on that day sori awon mo odo yin ni won da emi mi le lori mo jo won so that aeroplane coming Ezekiel won wo ba lu na nbo I will put my spirit within you and ye shall walk in my statutes says the Lord won fi emi mi sinu yin eyin o si ma re ni ilana mi ni oluwa wi before the aeroplane landed before jesus came before the better promises came they had died and gone to heaven ki ba lu na to ba ki jesus oluwa to de gbogbo won ti ku won ti re koja sorun now while the aeroplane landed we became born again and we say here we are what the means we come to claim them sugbon ni bayi ti ba lu na wa ba awa wa di atun bi awon nkan ta won yen padanu awa wa lafani ati gba loni look at verse 39 and verse 40 iwo wo ese ikokan de logoji ati ese ogoji that same hebrews chapter 11 inu ebere ori kokan lakan na all these having obtained a good report through faith received no 
not the promise. The aeroplane bringing the promises had not landed before they died. Verse 40, God having provided some better things for us that without us, they should not be made perfect. The promises are yours today. And you are to enjoy them. Don't say, Abraham did not get it, so I cannot get it. Moses did not get it, so I cannot get it. Elijah did not get it, so I cannot. Ah, the aeroplane did not land before they died. Now the aeroplane has landed. We are here in the kingdom. The promise is for you. In Acts chapter 2 verse 16 This is that which was spoken by Joel the prophet It shall come to pass in the last days says God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy And your old man your young men shall see visions And your old men shall dream dreams Verse 39 for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Peter Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. You may not know too many verses of the Bible. If you know just this one, He has given unto us. Not that he is still planning to do it. He has given it unto us already when the new covenant. Jesus has come. Jesus has provided everything. Now it belongs to you. He has given unto us. And then it says all things. Then he divides that into two groups. Number one, all things that pertain to life. Your physical life, your family life, your domestic life, your social life, provision, everything, all things that pertain to life. And then it says, all things that pertain to godliness, spiritual part. By his, by his divine power, he has given them unto us. Look at verse 4. Whereby are given unto us. It is not that we are looking for it, already it is in our possession. He has given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. He has given us promises that are precious, promises that are great, exceedingly great. Your life must change from tonight. Your situation must change from tonight. This, your possession must change from tonight. You look at all those people in the old covenant. They didn't have enough. They didn't have too many promises. Yes, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 28, you'll see promises upon promises. You have that, you have more. If you look at Exodus 15:26, you have the promise. 
promise of God to Israel. You have that, you have more. And if you have, if you look at um, uh, Exodus chapter 23, 25, 26, you will see the promise of God to Israel. You have that and you have more. Isaiah 54 verse 17, made to Israel, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. That was made to Israel, you have it, you have more. Isaiah ori kerin le ni adota ese keta de logun a se le ri fun israeli pe ko si ohun ijakata ase si o ti o le se nkan oni ye gege bi oni gbagbo loni osun ni ju be Psalm 34 verse 19 that many are the afflictions of the righteous the Lord delivereth them from them all is for Israel you have it you have more Ori David ori kerin le logbo ese ikokan de logun to so pe opolopo ni ipeju ododo sugbon Olorun gba kuro nu gogo re a se le ri fun israeli oni gege bi oni gbagbo loni osun ni he that abides under the shadow of the Almighty, he goes on to say, You'll see them with your eyes. 10,000 falling there, 1,000 falling there. It will not come near you. It was made to Israel originally. You have it and you have more. Only David, only Cocker, Lenia, Doro, those of you, and it's your joke, only be Cocker, Gabon, you, my baby, or your Lord Mary. Also, I didn't know I was at Total Lepe, Egbert, you, Subunia, Pare, Barunia, Pass, or Tore, Kikio, you, and you have Maria, and when you have Buburu, or Ripe, Ashley, and Fuins, Ray, Subay, or Gabioni, but only Loni, or Tuni, you bear. There's something great God has given to you. Oh, Lala, only and you will begin to enjoy them from tonight whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws you will escape every corruption in the world in John chapter 14 verse 12 and as you read this you tell me if anybody in the Old Testament had anything like this verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works I do he shall do also Thank God you are still alive. I said, Thank God you are still alive. This promise, if it has not been fulfilled in your life, tonight it must start to be fulfilled in your life. The works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than this shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, I will do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You covenant people, see the promises the Lord has given unto you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The way some people interpret that is that there are some things God has prepared for us we will never see in this world until we go to heaven. Well, that statement itself is true, but that's not the interpretation of this verse. What the eyes of the old covenant people have not seen. What the ears of the old covenant people have not heard. The things that had not entered into the 
heart of the old covenant man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him today who are living in the new covenant. Look at verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us in the new covenant now by his spirit. For the spirit such as all things, yea, the deep things of God. This is your privilege. If you are a new creature in Christ, it belongs to you. And I believe you'll begin to have it in your life. Let's not look at the third point, the privilege of the new creature. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 8, reading from verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, uh, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Verse 10, this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in those, after those days, says the Lord. These are the privileges now, the fulfillment of the promise, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their heart and I will be unto them a God and they shall be to me a people. They're telling us they will not only just save us ordinarily. They will not just forgive our sins ordinarily. They will not just clean us up ordinarily. He will do something in our hearts that the Old Testament people did not know. In the Old Covenant, he wrote his laws upon the stone. And then they put that in the mercy in the in the um, in the mercy seat under the mercy seat. That he is in the ark of the covenant. But the Lord is saying, I will no more write it upon the stone. I will now write that law instead of upon the stone. I will write it on your very heart. He says so that nobody will say, I am illiterate, I cannot read. He said, if you cannot read, I will write my word, I will write my law, I will write my promises, I write everything of the new covenant, I will write it in your very heart. I didn't know that adultery fornication is bad. You know, you people, you know me, I cannot read. Where is it in the Bible? Where it says you will not commit adultery. I don't know where it is. That's why I'm living a wrong place. He said, no. Even though you are illiterate, if you get born again, you come to me for sanctification, I will write that word of God, the word of righteousness, the word of holiness. I will write it in your heart. <laughs> You people are not a member of deeper life. Our preachers did not teach us. They didn't tell us that there's anything wrong with worldliness. I am hearing for the first time that he that loves the world is not a, is an enemy of God. A friend of the world is the enemy of God. I didn't know that I was born again. I'm a real child of God. That's why you find all this. He said that you will not complain like that. He will write it in your heart. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It will not depend on what denomination you are. If you come to me in the new covenant, I will write it in your heart. And you know, ma, we can walk in your mind, your deeper life. They be when you go to a long walk in kill of one by a year, Nikat Modebi Moses and Boniga, or quite quickly, I must have fair a year, or long so I pay you, Nija, we read, Nikato Batito, or long what about the Gokarela. When you get people, one deeper life above one new job mirror, or long Nikwe must have fair a year, don't think Benny Nore, and can't talk about fair a year, fetch about Sinure, or long you go to no Kayare, the Bipe, while in my big Gaye to Tako, Ibayere. I am a believer, but I want to go and marry an unbeliever. Only by Bonnie Missu, Bamo fell off your life. Don't you know the Bible says be not on equal yoke together with unbelievers? Oh, why my belly pass? They don't teach marriage in 
in our church. I didn't know that. God knows the sincerity of my heart. I am born again. I'm a child of God. If I had been taught, I would not have said I want to marry a non-believer. God said in the new covenant, He will write it in your heart. That is law, is word. Thou shalt you will not be unequally yoked together with unbeliever. It's inside your heart. He will write it. If you want to take any step, the Holy Spirit will be reading it aloud from your heart and will tell you, you cannot do it. You may not even know where it is in the Bible. And the Lord is doing it already. He is writing his word in the heart of the people that are coming to him. It is the fulfillment of the new covenant. That's why you'll find somebody stands up and gives a testimony. And he will say, I praise the Lord. Nobody taught me about jewelry. I was just uh, sleeping in my house. And then somebody told me, when you wake up, go and read 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. I woke up, I picked my Bible for the first time in my life. I never, nobody ever taught me. I just read it and immediately without any preacher I just abandoned everything I said I'm going to obey the word of God all the jewelry, all the cosmetics, everything I threw away everything some of these videos say I wasn't even in deeper life at that time I will write my law in their inward path somebody will rise up and give testimony and say you know I nobody came to invite me to deeper life I was in one church and they were preaching and dancing and I was sorrowful in my heart and God was telling me you have not got to the place where I'm taking you this is not the place you will settle down and then he says oh God where will I go and then the things spoke from the heart go to deeper life and then after I said go to deeper life he said without holiness no man shall see the Lord he said, I didn't know whether that one is Revelation or Matthew or Genesis he just told me in my heart without holiness no man shall see the Lord so Genesis, Matthew, and I didn't have anybody to direct me Sunday, I woke up. I got to the bus stop. I saw people going. I joined the vehicle. And then I asked somebody in the vehicle, Do you know deeper life? And, the one, and that one said, That's where we're going. That is why I came. And the first day I came, the first passage, the preacher opened and he said, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I said, I knew it before I came. That's why I came. I will write the word in their inward part. When the Lord writes the Bible in your heart, there will be no problem with holiness anymore. No problem with obedience to the word of God anymore. This is the privilege of the new creature. And the Lord can do it tonight. I said the Lord can do it tonight. But you will be patient. Moses went to the mountain and God wanted to write the law of God is law on the stone. It took more than one minute. He took more than five minutes. And Moses waited there before the law until the Lord wrote everything upon the table. Tonight the word of God is not to be written on the table. It is to be written
written in your heart and written in my heart. We want to begin to enjoy the new covenant. Salvation that is definite and clear, that has no doubt, that has assurance. That's new covenant. Not salvation that I say, I don't know whether I got it. At new covenant salvation, new covenant salvation will say, I know I got it. I am born again. I'm a child of God. That's assurance in my heart. New covenant holiness that has no blemish, has no spot. That God washes you, purifies you, you are whiter than snow. New covenant holy ghost baptism. The, the, the fire of God coming upon your life. Coming from the altar, from heaven, dropping in your soul, speaking in new language, knowing that something new has happened to me. That is greater than the boldness of Elijah or Moses. The authority that is greater than the authority of Elijah. And prayer, fervent prayer. A kind of prayer you begin to pray like this. All demons, all devils, all sicknesses, everything will clear out of the way. A new covenant believer is standing and talking to Almighty God. New covenant understanding of the Bible. You read the Bible like this. A new covenant child of God. Reading the word of God. You read it like this. And the spirit of God begins to explain. Begins to interpret. And as a new covenant person. is written in your heart. is written in the Bible. As you are reading it. Your heart is saying amen. Your heart is saying yes. Your heart is saying yes. I believe it. I accept it. Because you see. It's in your heart. It's in the book. Everything is linked together. There is a magnet within you wanting to swallow the word of God. Take the word of God. A new covenant believer's attitude to the word of God. Tonight we are moving away from the old covenant. We are coming to the center of the new covenant. Let all the witnesses of the Old Testament leave you alone. All the anxiety, all the worry, all the faithlessness, all the limitation of the Old Covenant, let it leave you alone tonight. See yourself on this other side. You are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in you that he that is in the world. Little children, you have overcome the world. And if you will ask anything in my name, I will do it unto you. Now, with the New Testament believers, all things are possible. New covenant believers will tell this mountain, be removed out of that place. It will remove. You will not doubt in your heart. You are a new covenant believer after all. And then the word of God, you swallow the Bible. Swallow the word of God. I don't mean physically. It is written in your heart. And when the devil comes to tempt you, that thing is inside there. You point at the devil and say, it is written. While the devil is trembling, you say, it is written again. While the devil is not down, you say, it is written again. And that thing will have to vanish out of your sight. New covenant believer, rise up and talk to the Lord. We are no more in the old covenant. We are no more the anxious, the worried people, the fearful people, the limited people. Sister, you are greater than Anna. Brother, you are greater than Elijah. You are in the new covenant. Are you not born again? Why are you doubting? Are you not born again? Why are you trembling? Are you not born again? Why will you be crying? Are you not born again? Why are you fearful? Are you not born again? Why can you not pray? Are you not born again? Why are you not bold? 
Are you not in the new covenant? Are you not a child of God? Why don't you let the Lord write his word in your heart? He will write his promises in your heart. He will write his commandments in your heart. He will write it with power and authority. And when you talk, you talk with the authority of the Spirit of God living within you. When you pray, you are praying according to the new covenant. When you claim the promises, you do it as a new covenant believer. When you march, when you walk, you are marching and walking like a new covenant believer. Come to the center of the new covenant. Come to the center of the new covenant. You are more than a prophet. You are more than those prophets of the Old Testament. You are more than all those people that did one thing or the other in the Old Testament. New covenant believers. You should not be afraid of the devil. You should not be afraid of demons. You should not be afraid of negative prophecy. New covenant believers. I will be your God and ye shall be my people. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you till the end of the world. The promises unto you and to your children and to them that are far off even as many as I got shall come. I will cleanse you. For all your filthiness will I cleanse you. I will put a new heart within you. I will take the stony heart out of you. I will put my spirit within you. The spirit of power. The spirit of courage. The spirit of boldness. The spirit of authority. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of knowledge. I will put my spirit within you. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men, your young women will see visions. Your young men, you will dream dreams. Upon my handmaids, upon my babies, I will pour my spirit on that day. He that is a thirst, let him come unto me, says the Lord. Let him come and drink. He that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. There was a sudden rush, a rushing mighty wind. Coming tongues like fire came upon them. As they opened their mouths, they began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave them utterance. And when he called out his disciples, he gave unto them power. Power against sickness. Power against demons. And he told them, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. New covenant believer, whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. New covenant believer, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will give unto you. New covenant believer, no man shall be able to stand before you. New covenant believer, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. New covenant believer, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. New covenant believer, I'm the Lord that He lets thee. New covenant believer, exceedingly great and precious promises. New covenant believer, I wish above all things that you will prosper, your soul will prosper as well. New covenant believer, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. New covenant believer, he that touches you touches the apple of the eye of the Lord. New covenant believer, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. New covenant believer, his son shall follow them that believe. They will cast out devils in my name. They will lay hands on the sea. They will take off serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, shall not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sea, and they shall 
recover. New Testament believers, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. New covenant believers, the joy of the Lord is my strength. New covenant believers, enter in into the manifold blessings of the Lord. New covenant believers, the Lord is by your side. You are fighting under the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord is your refuge. The Lord is your shield. The Lord is your buckler. You will see the unbelievers. 10,000 will fall on this side, 1,000 on the other side. Only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. Because he has known my name, I will be with him in trouble. He will tread upon the lion and the adder. Upon the young lion, you will trample upon them. Because behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy, over all the serpents and the scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. New Testament believer, come and let the Lord write his law in your heart. Let him write his word in your heart. Let him write the holiness in your heart. Let him write the commandment in your heart. Let him write the word against worldliness in your heart. Let him give you the boldness to obey the law. I will write my law in their heart. I will put my law in their mind. And they will not be teaching one another know the law. Because they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. I will forgive their sin. Their iniquity will I remember no more. New covenant believers, come and let the Lord do a new thing in your life. A new thing in your life. It is time for the new thing to begin in your life. The Lord is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Come into the privilege, into the promises of the better covenant.